so beginneth the great fishing caper. All right, so uh, we're headed to go fishing down the Buffalo River. I have obviously no idea how to fish. <laughs> so uh, if you didn't catch what's in the fishing kit, look at the last contents video, at the end of the last contents video. That's what we're fishing with. I'm going to have to be quiet when we get down there, right? So uh, I'll tell you now, we're, we're fishing for whatever we can catch because I don't know how, what styles to fish for what fish or whatever, but I know what's in there is trout, smallmouth bass, carp, uh, supposedly there's some catfish, my wife saw an alligator gar, all kinds of fish, and oh, and uh, um, bluegill, lots of sunfish in there. So, um, but before we go, I wanted to show you uh, the cool part about, by the way, I put the, I moved the Yules back into this pack because I missed it. Um, it's, the other pack comes up above my head, this pack, it's, it stays, well, here, I'll put it on for you. <laughs> See when I put it on, it like rides like below my, my neckline here. That is great for when I have to like duck under shit or or it doesn't get caught on vines and shit when we're walking through the forest. So I'm um, anyway, I moved it into this pack for, for that reason. I like the color better too, which is pretty cool. I'd I would like this pack to be like five more liters to ten more liters, but you know, whatever. If I need more space, I can take out that 20 liter dry bag we carry, which I'm about to take out here in a second, you'll see it, and just strap it to the top. So I'm not too worried about it. But one thing I want to show you guys, the reason why modularity is, I'm like, hey, I want to go hiking and fishing today. But my pack is set up to go live in the woods. Fortunately, it is a modular pack. And all I need to do to convert it to a, uh, a happy, this 27 pounds with everything here, to convert it to a happy hiking pack is remove some stuff. This is the Yules module, has my trap and has some food in it. I think traps are actually illegal to carry down in the Buffalo River National Park because they don't allow trapping down there, but I don't know. Anyway, take that out. I won't be spending the night overnight, so... Remove all our insulation with the USGI poncho and the uh, the USGI green patrol bag. All right? Bada bing, bada boom. Two simple modifications. Now I'm ready to go hiking and fishing all day. And I've got water and rudimentary shelter and knives and fishing gear. And a couple power bars, you know. But, boom, converted. Now we're down to 20 pounds, and we get to go fishing. <laughs> and Or hiking. Or, you know, I wouldn't even mind spending a night or two in the woods with just what I got back here. So, uh, that being said, game on. Let the great fishing caper begin! 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 All right, guys, we're down here at the river, and uh, looking at our fishing kit, the river is flooded from having like like all the rain. We've had like two days of rain, and uh, I don't know what the fish do during that, <laughs> but I do know that. Uh, the best time to fish is mid or uh, morning and night, and we are here out in a smack dab in the middle of the day, so <laughs> that doesn't bode well for us either. Uh, I'll be interested to see if we catch anything, but uh, so where are we going with this? I'm just I'm gonna set up the rig like I showed you guys here. I'll set it up here on camera for you so you can see. I didn't really set it up in the other videos, so. I hope we're all in the shot here. <laughs> Try and do it down here. So first thing I do is unwind this thing, right? And then I use the box as kind of like a reel. So the next thing I do, Cap that off in there. 
so I don't lose it when I cast. And then just wind it up here. Not too tight, because the tighter I wind it, the uh, the more friction is it's going to take to get it off this motherfucker when I cast. So just as light as I can. Just as light as I can. I think we're going to start off by doing some top fishing, right? So, we got our hook over here. I'm going to bust off one of our leader lines here, figure out which one. We got our hook here. I think this is a number 10, number 8, somewhere around there. Find the leader line here. Good, and I gotta keep all this in the camera. Where's a good one? There we go. Let's take this guy. Kidoki. Put this back up here. There we go. Just now I'm gonna attach the leader line the little barrel swivels to each other like so so now we've got a leader line and I think we're gonna do some surface fishing so I'm gonna put uh oh this bobber does not have a crack in it oh yeah it does there it is <laughs> damn that yellow is bright as fuck to look at Where'd you go? There you are. Alright. Cork the old bobber on. Boom. Attach the old hook down here. To the other end of the barrel swivel. Like so. And now we're ready for our bait. So I just I got these worms out of my garden. You could I could have dug these here, right? But uh, just so you know, we're using worms. I think I've got some. Uh, come here, guy. Your time has come. I think I got some uh, uh, potato bugs in there too. Spear him. He's a little guy. I might not catch very big fish. Oh fuck! <laughs> Pause. Edit. I forgot this. I forgot to hook the speed hooks on. God damn it! All right. <laughs> Be right back. It's <laughs> a good reason all this stuff's modular, right? So uncork the bobber. <laughs> Uncork the bobber. Get a little backup here. Needs a backup. Get to the chopper. There we go. Remove bobber. Remove barrel swivel. From mainline barrel swivel. Spring hook <laughs> to barrel swivel. Da -da -da -da. And attach barrel swivel. So this is this is kind of the weird part. The this barrel swivel has to go through. The spring hooks barrel swivel, right? And then across and hook onto the other end. Uh. That's how it hooks the fish. So we get the line, 
connected to the, the spring hook, connected to the barrel, swivel, weight line, sp spring hook, <laughs> leader line, like so. Huh? Okay. Now, set the bait before we set the barrel swivel. Still going to be fishing on top, so I'm going to put I put the bobber back on, right? Because if, if I put it above that spot, the, the speed hook's not going to activate. So we have about, I don't know, 12 inches of, of leader line. It'll be more, I guess, once I close that thing. Get the unlucky worm. Come on, give me a fatty here. Boom, there you is. Check. Keep the bait out of the sun. Check. Get this guy on here. Now, there's like a technique to putting a worm on the hook, and I have no idea what it is. So I just kind of skewer them through the middle. Oops. Come here, buddy. Good move. Yeah. There we go. Skewered in the middle. And then I'll, like, wrap them around once. <laughs> and skewer them again. Where he'll wrap himself around once and skewer him again. And then one final skewer. Just to seal the deal. Alright. So there we go. And now I will show you how I cast this motherfucker. We may need to tie a rock weight onto it to get the distance cast I need. But the thing about casting in a river is I'll show you in a second. If you don't need to go far because... Say the river's moving this way, right? Flowing this way. Say we're standing here. When we cast out, it carries the shit all the way down river to where it's only a couple, you know, feet off the bank down here anyway. So you'll see what I'm talking about. But let's go cast this guy with worms. Also forgot. You gotta set the spring hook too. Oh. Spring hook set. Good news is <laughs> the spring hook didn't release, even with uh, you know, with some weed stuck on the bottom of it. The bad news is the spring hook sinks the bobber. So what the hell is going on here? So we're, it looks like we're going to be bottom fishing. Let's figure this out of here. Something's going on. kind of tangled up here. Alright, so if we're bottom fishing, I guess we don't need the fucking bobber, right? Or maybe we do. Maybe we can make it float off the bottom. I don't know. I'm sure the yellow keller attracts fish. does not float. Should we attach two bobbers, you think? Can we even attach a bobber on this part? 
See, we really don't know anything about fishing. Can I put a bobber here? Oh yeah, I can put a bobber there. A little finesse, right? Shit. Of course, we don't, we don't actually have any finesse, so... <laughs> okay, we'll just brute force it, how about that? Get your ass in there, there you go. pa -ching. I really thought these bobbers would be strong though, so I'm gonna go get another bobber, put it on top of that, and then go cast. So we're rolling with two bobbers. Dual wielding bobbers. <laughs> Set the spring. Check, check, check. Go do it on the castling. see it drifting downstream, but this is like the main problem I have. If it drifts downstream and then it swings back in. This is the main problem I have with limb lining, hand lining, trot lining, whatever. Because, you know, the theory is we would then attach this part to the fucking ground, right? A rock and bury it and put our license on the end of it, but the river brings it back over. <laughs> You guys got any ideas how to fix that? Let me know. So I guess uh, we're limited to hand casting at this moment in time. So I'm gonna keep fucking around with it and I'll let you know if we catch any fish. Although, probably not. <laughs> All right, so we didn't catch shit. <laughs> Uh, let's do an AAR here. Uh, well, I take that back. Hold on. I caught these gnarly rimless sunglasses. Very small. Rimless. I mean, lensless, because they've been sitting in the water. But, but that's it. I didn't actually catch them. I found them in the water. But, so, um, I'm convinced we didn't catch anything because the river's flooded. Uh, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see behind me, but the river's moving like five miles a fucking hour. You know, I throw the bobber in, it's like shh. So, um, that combined with the fact that it's midday, I know fish don't eat midday, but this is the time that, you know, I had to come down and practice some fishing, so hey, we take what we can get. Um, I think that's why we didn't catch shit, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> um, we didn't even get any bites. Um, I've fished this technique before in the non-flooded river. This part of the river is my secret special spot. It's a, uh, it normally doesn't move as fast. This is normally where the water pools up. This is actually right now is the slowest moving part of the river. Um, and it's also the slowest moving part of the river normally <laughs> when it, when it's not flooded. It's like this pool. There's a bunch of big fish and, and uh, bream and stuff that like to hang out in here, bluegill. 
and that uh I've fished that way before and I've caught bluegill at the very least so uh, maybe I have a picture of one I think I have a picture of one cooking open open fire I'll throw it up um, there's proof that <laughs> that technique has worked before but we're it's we're definitely gonna have to come up with something different as far as uh, limb lining right um, we can't limb lines just don't work you know because the current brings say when the line is anchored one point you toss it out the current just keeps bringing it back towards you know I don't know maybe it would work but I don't think may, very many big fish go out there um, I reckon it would work if if uh, we were on the deep side you know the the river curves its way around and always there's a deep side and a shallow side and the deep side is always on the, uh, the outside of the side where it curves because the more momentum and the water cuts deeper channel so if we were on the deep side and we threw it out I reckon it wouldn't matter uh, when it came back you know because it's still when it comes back the current brings it back it's still a good five or ten feet out in the water and if that was on the deep side fuck that you know it shouldn't make a fuck <laughs> but we're on the shallow side today um, what else I, I'm pleased with the speed hooks the AAR and the or the AAR <laughs> and the fishing kit in general uh, it was it was very easy to the modular aspect of the fishing kit made it real easy to organize and quick to set up quick to take down quick to repack so I like that aspect of the fishing kit um, man I just don't know I the, the ideal goal right is to get to where we could set up um, we come, you know, we come down, we take our fishing kit, put shit together, toss it in the water, walk upstream, fucking 100 yards, toss another one in the water, walk upstream, another 100 yards, toss another one in the water. Um, you know, leave them overnight, come back, there's giant fish hooked on them the next morning. Mmm, yummy. That's the ideal. But I can't figure out how to do that really with the current. So if you guys have any ideas, I know, God, what do we have, like 600 and... 47 subscribers let's assume like five percent of that watches you know actually watches every fucking video um let's do 10 percent because the math's easier <laughs> so was that 65 ish people so 30 to 60 people that regularly watch this channel one of y'all's got to know how to fish one of y'all's got to like drop me some pointers here because i'm starting from nothing i have no mentor the only fishing i ever done was in a catfish pond that was stocked <laughs> right <laughs> on a dock with a cane pole that's the only fishing i've ever done so if you guys see some technique that would work better you know based on the area that we're at or something i'm doing wrong that i should be doing or should i be fishing at the bottom or fishing at the top fucking drop me a line dude i am not that guy like that's gonna be like oh you tell me how to fish like that is not fucking me bro <laughs> so uh just Drop me a line and let me know and I'll try it out, you know, next time we go fucking fishing. Just leave a comment in the comments section. It would be much appreciated because, uh, like we saw in the last contents video, fishing is what's going to give us protein five months out of the year. So, we, we really need to become adept at fishing. Um, so, the, <laughs> if I was a little fishy and I had a little place I was living called my home <laughs> and a uh, thunderstorm came and fucking whooshed up the river and lifted my home up and stirred up sediment and stuff uh you know i'm not sure i'd be so keen on eating fake bait and shit that's thrown in the water so i don't know i'm calling i'm calling failure for sure uh but failure because the river's flooded and we came down here midday i think of it had been like evening time or morning time and the river wasn't flooded we came to the exact same spot and used the exact same shit we'd at least caught some bluegill that's what i think um the the 50 foot line that i used to cast you know cast stuff out with 50 feet that's really about as far as i can get on a hand cast um i'm not sure if i need it to be farther though you know, like right now we're on the shallow side of the river. That side of the river is the deep side of the river. It's curving around like this. 
what if we need to fish on the other side of the river, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I guess, I guess really I'm just waiting on uh, you guys. I'm going to put this video up and wait on you who know how to fish to be like, Sweetie, what the fuck are you doing? And so I can be like, bro, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And you can be like, dude, you got to do it this way. And I'll be like, bro, I fucking e-hug you. <laughs> right? So, again, if you know how to fish for carp, bluegill, trout, especially smallmouth bass, we got a lot of that in here. Um, sadly, we don't have any catfish. I mean, they're here and there. I think they, they're blue catfish, bullhead, I don't know. But they're not that many. I looked up the fishes of the Ozark River. You can Google it. There's a, like a 200 meg PDF that comes up when uh, you Google Arkansas Fish and Game Fishes of the Ozark River. And uh, you can see uh, up and down the river like what we have to work with. Um, when we go do our six months in the woods, we're... The rivers we are going to be adjacent to and using are going to be the Buffalo River and the White River. So, those are, those are our two food resources river-wise. Um, there might be some little streams, a lot of little streams in, in there, but river-wise, that's all we're working with. So, I guess, uh, I guess I'm going to let you guys go, <laughs> um, but I am officially begging you guys for help. Turn me into a fisherman. I need it. And you could save years. Any comment, no matter how dumb it is, you know, I won't be like, oh, you fucking moron, I already knew that. I'll just be like, thanks, dude. <laughs> if it's if it's something I already know. So just drop me a line. If you know anything about the habits of of, of bluegill or bass, smallmouth bass or carp or trout, um yeah, that's it. I think I think we're gonna end the video now. And think of anything else to say? There were two canoers that came by, and I was like, "Are you fishing?" And they were like, "Yep." And I was like, "Are you catching anything?" And they were like, "Nope." And I was like, "I think it's because the river's flooded." Independently, two independent ones, and they were like, "Yep," because the river's flooded. So. I think it's because the river's flooded, but I can't tell if they just thought, like, I was some pro-local angler out here fucking handlining, you know? <laughs> oh, well, if he says the river's flooded, it must be because the river's flooded. So I'll be like, yep, it's because it the river's flooded. I can't tell if that was what happened or not, but... Anyway, the fishing extravaganza! We're going with Flooded River. Obviously, we have a lot more to learn. Hopefully, you guys can help us in that, and, uh... The journey continues. <laughs>